While everyone is discussing how the optimal TBC leveling experience is within the dungeons of Outland, there are going to be times when you can't or just don't want to do instance content. With that comes questing. With questing comes some seriously good rewards that you need to look out for. Hello and welcome. I am Zabraxi. This video is going to be a bit of an info dump, so I'm going to try and be as efficient and organized as possible. There's a lot of quests here and a lot of items. So what I've done is in the description down below, there will be a list out of all the different types of specs. So like a caster DPS, an agility DPS, strength, tank, and healer. I'm going to have those organized out with different timestamps to the quests that will be applicable to that role. So if you're only planning on playing that spec or that role, you can be at least a little bit organized and not have to watch the whole video. One more quick note before I start though, is that I'm going off of the assumption that when Blizzard says they're using the 2.4.3 data, that that includes all quests that have been introduced over the period of the Burning Crusade. If that's incorrect, whoops, <laughs> but hopefully I'm right. And hopefully that's what they end up doing. Without any more filler, let's go. Around midway through your leveling process, you're going to start hitting some quests that genuinely give you some decent rewards. Along that journey, you're going to want to stop by the Akanai Crypts to start a quest line. Starting with I See Dead Draenei, you'll want to complete this quest chain until you're tasked with retrieving the Book of the Dead from Levixus the Soul Caller. This quest rewards very good elemental shaman boots, some very strong healing gloves, and some decent balanced druid and Ellie shaman legs. While none of these are pre-raid bis, they are just under that level of quality and it's a 64 quest. Just to give you an idea of how quickly the items you get can actually be pretty good here. Upon completing the Levixus the Soul Caller, you'll unlock Everything Will Be Alright, which requires you to complete the Akanai Crypt's dungeon. All of these chest pieces are worth stopping by for, especially the cloth caster and the leather DPS items. The Akanai Anchorite's robe, for example, is incredibly competitive with pre-raid bis for all of the mage specs outside the spell fire and frozen shadow weave from tailoring or the robe of the Crimson Order world drop. While you're in Auchindoon, you can head over to the entrance to Sethic Halls and grab the quest can't stay away, which will lead you into Brother Against Brother. After venturing into the Sethic Hall dungeon, you can complete this quest and you'll be rewarded with four possible neck pieces. While all of these are good for any spec, if you're a DPS, then there are better necklaces elsewhere, so don't feel too pressured for this quest, but it's worth it to get it out of the way. However, the Mark of the Raven Guard is perfect for getting you into heroic dungeons and could even get you stepping into Karazhan. This very high stamina and defense rating makes it a perfect gearing option that you shouldn't ignore. The Sethic Oracle's Focus Healing Necklace is also extremely powerful and is only bested by one heroic drop and one other quest reward. This quest is worth doing if you're a tank or a healer, which means if a DPS wants to do a dungeon, then you get to decide which one it is anyway. Make it Sethic Calls. Let's head over to one of the most beautiful zones Blizzard has ever made, Nagrand. Or Nagrand, I don't really care how you say it. Outland's cousin to the Stranglethorn Vale has some very good quests and some very good rewards. While everyone should do the Ring of Blood questline for some easy weapons and some fun group-based content, there are plenty of others in here as well that people don't talk about enough. Within the Throne of the Elements in the northern part of Nagrant, you can start a quest chain from Elementalist Untrag. Completing his task will lead you to Gurok the Usurper with some very good necklaces as a reward. The healing necklace is fine, but the option from Brother Against Brother is a better choice. However, if you're a physical DPS player that's mad that you haven't had any representation yet in this video, then the Earthen Mark of Raising should put you at ease. With some very wonderful stats, this necklace is only surpassed by a single heroic necklace and the badge reward neck. If you want agility, then you want to make sure that you go out of your way for this quest. Staying in the Grand, you can start the quest line from Altruist the Sufferer that will lead you to a quest called Forge Camp Annihilated. This has some pretty decent rewards. This edgy man will give you a awesome healing chest piece, which is good for any healer that's out there. And the legs are also very strong for agility DPS, but the real winner is the breastplate of the Warbringer. Really high stamina, some defense rating, and hit rating. These are all absolutely wonderful stats for a tank that's trying to get into heroics and raiding. This is actually the best tanking chest piece that you can get from questing. So be sure to get your way over here and grab this strong item. Are you bored of Outland yet? If you said yes, then, well, this is going to be a weird expansion for you. Let's do take a break from Outland, though, for just a moment, and let's head to Tenaris to go visit the Caverns of Time, which is another place you're going to be spending a lot of time. I hate redundancy. 
At the entrance of the Caverns of Time, you'll start a quest line to unlock the instances located in this area. After completing Escape from Durnhold, you'll be asked to return to Andormu. The Tempest's touch gloves make a very strong pre-raid handpiece, especially given the extra sockets. The Warchief's mantle also should be pointed out here for all the tanks. Also tanks, have you noticed that the dungeon and group-based items are actually really good rewards? Take note of that because that trend actually exists through pretty much all of Outland. Speaking of Outland, let's head back into Outland and into one of the weirdest looking zones, the Blades Edge Mountains. Odds are you're going to be spending a good chunk of time here during Classic TBC, and a good way to get to know the area would be to do some quests. The quest we're looking for in particular right now, though, is called Showdown. If you're Alliance, then this chain can be easily started at Commander Hafis Stonewall with a quest called A Date with Dorgok. If you're Horde, well, you finally have to pay a little horde tax because this quest chain takes double the amount of completions to get to in order to get to the finale. And in order to start this quest line as horde, you must retrieve an item called the Thunderlord Clan Artifact from killing Bladespire Ogres. Yeah, it's a random drop. Cool. Once you've made it to and completed Showdown, you'll be pleasantly surprised if you're a DPS. The blackened chestplate is incredibly strong for those warriors and rep bellies out there. This item is actually tied for pre-raid bis for both specs and only rivaled by one other quest reward. Another shining item would be the cleft hoof hide leggings. If you're not melee, then the agility DPS legs are fine, but the cleft hoof hide legs are perfect for rogues and feral druids. Expertise goes a long way and these items prove it. While we're in Blades Edge Mountains, make your way over to the northeast side of the zone and kill some fell corruptors to get an item called the Damaged Mask. This will start you down a quest line that will lead you to the Hound Master. This quest is absolutely insane, by the way. There's a reward useful for basically every spec here. The two big standouts, though, have to be Natasha's Battle Chain for tanks, which is only bested by one other necklace for pre-raid bis, and then there's also Natasha's Pack Collar, which is actually considered the pre-raid bis for retribution, and DPS warriors. The only neck that beats it is from Badges of Justice. No matter who you are though, be sure to get this quest out of the way as these items are absolutely bonkers. Before we jump into Netherstorm, let's take a look at some dungeon quests. If you chose Alliance, then you get an advantage here since you'll have access to a quest called Fell Embers. You can start this quest in honor hold from a fella named Magus Zabraxis? That name is, uh, you know, well, Look, can you DMCA strike an NPC for having a name too close to yours? Is that a thing? Can I do that? By completing Fell Embers inside the Shattered Halls, you'll have access to some decent rewards. If you're an agility-based DPS, then you're definitely going to want to grab the Expedition Scout's shoulders, as they are very competitive with your pre-raid piss items. You can make your way over to Zangermarsh and pick up the quest The Warlord's Hideout from Watcher Jang outside the Steam Vaults. While some decent items for basically everyone, the Helm of the Claw is pre-raid bis for rogues, feral druids, ret paladins, and DPS warriors, and is only beaten by the engineering goggles if you take that profession. The Myrmidon's Headdress is also an insanely powerful reward for tanks, and will serve as your pre-raid bis head unless you can afford the Helm of the Stalwart Defender from Blacksmithing, or you can craft the engineering goggles. In the middle of Shatrath, Spy Mistress Melissa Highcrown will give you the quest Trouble at Auchendune, which will start you down a quest into the Shadow Labyrinth. This quest chain ends with Into the Heart of the Labyrinth, which offers you some great booties for your feeties. That was dumb. If you're a caster DPS, agility DPS, plate DPS, or a tank, then you've got some seriously awesome options here available for you. Outside the Shadow Labyrinth dungeon in Auchendune, there's also a quest called Find Spy Togun, which you can complete in order to obtain the quest The Soul Devices. Upon completion of this quest, you'll be rewarded with incredibly potent bracers for basically every spec in the game besides healers. Yeah, I know healers, you're kind of getting let out, but we'll get you, don't worry. Feel free to pick which one of these you want because you probably won't find too many that are actually better. From here, let's make our way finally over to Netherstorm, where the quest rewards start to get seriously strong. And, and by the way, you're gonna wanna do a lot of quests in this place. Starting from Zuben Elganubi, what the heck is that name? You can start the quest line to reach hitting the Motherlode. We're specifically here for the Cloak of Woven Energy for any caster DPS and the Celestial Jewel Ring, which is incredibly powerful for healers. In the northeastern side of Netherstorm, an NPC called Wind Trader Marid will grant a quest a not so modest proposal, which will eventually lead you to securing the Celestial Ridge. If you're a caster, 
These are some stupidly good boots. However, if you're a hunter or enhancement shaman, then the Golden Link Bracers are far stupider than they have any right to be. The wrist guards can only be beaten here by one heroic item drop and the crafted epic Ebon Netherscale Bracers. This is a quest to make sure you go out of your way for. The Mana Forge quests of Netherstorm are pretty iconic, and they also can be slightly different depending on whether you're Aldor or your Scryer. The Aldor quest starts from Anchorite Karja in Area 52, while the Scryer starting point is in Shatrath City from Arcanist Rayston. After going through the incredibly long quest line, you'll end up at Shutting Down Mana Forge Ara. If you're Scryer, you'll have access to a very powerful caster DPS ring and the debatable pre raid bis necklace for Protection Warrior and Paladin. The Aldor receive a very very okay ring, unless you're an enhancement shaman, in which case it's actually very powerful, and a healing necklace. While good for all healers, this is specifically pre-raid bis for holy priests and druids. So if you're a healer, I hope you're Aldor for this one because this is your first real representation on this list. Anchorite Karja also provides another quest called Assisting the Consortium. While yet another lengthy questline with multiple paths to go down, you'll eventually end up at Declawing Doomclaw. The quest offers a gun called Mama's Insurance. Not only is this item named perfectly, but it also is the pre-raid best-in-slot weapon for rogues and DPS warriors outside the exalted weapons from Thrawmar or Honorhold. Ravendwire in Air 52 also provides a quest called the Archmage's Staff, which starts a massive quest line spanning multiple branches and is absolutely bonkers. Go through these and you'll eventually hit Destroy Nibirius, which gives you some pretty good rewards for basically everyone. However, the leg guards of the Resolute Defender are incredibly powerful and quite possibly your best tanking legs that you can get before going into heroics. It's a very long and lengthy quest line, but trust me, it's worth it. Another quest you'll bump into along that quest line is Arcalos the Guardian. For a set of greens, these quest rewards are not green. The Rejuvenating Scepter is the best healing wand you're going to find outside Shadow Labs. The core of Arcalos is an incredibly powerful DPS trinket that can get you into heroic dungeons. And finally, the Cloak of the Valiant Defender is the best questing cape for tanks you'll find in Outland. It was at this point that I genuinely got sick of writing down Netherstorm quests, but we still have a few more to go. Thankfully, at least, Netherstorm has probably the most beautiful skybox WoW has ever made. So while you're doing loads of the quests that are in the zone, I mean, at least it looks pretty up there. That's that's nice, you know? We can at least get that. In Northeastern Netherstorm, Professor Debiri will give you a quest called A Recipe for Destruction. A couple quests later and you'll receive Dementius the All-Devouring. Debiri's Enigma is the best tanking trinket you can get from questing. The Void Slayer's Tunic is a phenomenal healing chest for Paladins of Resto Shaman. It's actually the pre-raid best in slot for Resto Shaman outside crafting. The Circlet of the Starcaller is also a pretty strong headpiece for Balanced Druid and Ellie Shaman, so overall it's not a bad haul. Wind Trader Tulamon opens with a quest called Dealing with the Foreman, which will eventually lead into a quest dealing with the Overmaster. The gloves of the Nether Stalker are pretty strong DPS gloves and compete with many heroic items. The real winner here, though, is the Wind Trader's Band. This is the best tanking ring you'll get from questing, and it's better than all but one of several heroic tanking rings. Remember Nether Stalker KG I mentioned earlier, the one who gave assisting the consortium? Well, her quest line also ends up leading back to Shatrath for a quest called Special Delivery to Shatrath City. This quest provides some insane rewards, but the chest plate of a doll competes with the plate DPS chest piece I mentioned earlier for the quest showdown. These items are so close in value that if you didn't get one, just grab the other. This quest also leads into the next part, how to break into the Architraz. This is part of your Karazhan attunement, so everyone's gonna want to end up doing this quest eventually anyway. All of the rewards from this quest are incredibly powerful, and unless you're a healer, any of these rewards are just under pre-raid bis value. I honestly feel like I need a breather after talking about so many dang Netherstorm quests. With Netherstorm out of the way, we can finally move into Shadowmoon Valley, where the quests are great, and the rewards are absolutely insane. <laughs> Home of the once great temple of Karabor, the Shadowmoon Valley now erupts with fellfire of the demonic forces that have invaded Outland. 
This is the area where quests start to really ramp up, and they peak as the finale of the Burning Crusade leveling experience. In each of the faction's main town, you can pick up a quest called the Path of Conquest. I don't want to spoil the details of this quest because it's genuinely really cool, but the set of rings from the rewards are really good. There's a good option here for basically everybody outside healers yet again, so if you still need to snag a ring to get into heroic groups, this is worth doing. While you're picking up this quest, you can also start the Cypher of Damnation questline. Within Shadowmoon Village and Wildhammer Stronghold, you can grab a quest called the Hand of Gul'dan. This is a very long questline, but if you ever plan to do the Tempest Keep raid, then you're going to want to get this done eventually. Near the end of the questline, you'll end up completing the Cypher of Damnation and the Cypher of Damnation Third Fragment Recovered. The Third Fragment quest has some potent items that you're going to want. That's a very strong set of gloves for hunters and enhancement shaman. The Felbord Hide shoes are pre-raid bis for rogues outside a leatherworking BOE and a world drop. The Spalders of the Torn Heart are also incredibly powerful, all casters out there. The next part of the chain, simply called the Cypher of Damnation, offers the best main hand for Protection Warriors pre-raid outside the Sun Eater from the Mechanar. For a quest line that you're gonna want to do anyway, these rewards aren't too bad. Last, but certainly not least, be sure to make your way over to Shatrath City and meet with an NPC named Fante, who provides the quests Chief Apothecary Hildegard for the Horde and Zorus the Judicator for the Alliance. This is another very, very long but worthwhile questline that deals directly with a raid boss that you'll come across later. Terran Gorfiend I Am is the final part of the questline and it rewards some insanely obnoxiously good helmets. Unless you're a Prot Warrior or Paladin, then any of these rewards you choose are in the top three available helmets for your pre raid bis gearing. No joke. Literally every spec outside the plate tanks have a piece of gear here that is almost Karazhan level quality. If you finish this quest line, then you can rest assured that your headpiece will be good enough to get into any content during phase one of Classic TBC. Thank you so much for watching this video. As much as I've been joking about it, I actually did genuinely enjoy this one. I had a lot of fun and it was quite the adventure to go down. And this was the biggest thing I've made yet. And it was a blast. If you did like it, please hit that like and subscribe button to let me know what you did and to enjoy and see more content that's coming out way more. I have loads of stuff on the way. And also don't forget to follow me on Twitch and Twitter, where that's where I do my TBC preparation and ramble about video games. So if you enjoy that, come on over. <laughs> that's it for me. And again, if you do need to use this video as a reference in the description below, there is a list to all the timestamps, to all the quests and to all the specs. So please feel free to use that and share it around if you think other people might find it helpful. That's it. I'm done and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.